Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the podcast or without spot or blemish ministry. Today, we're going to talk about how the Jezebel narcissist female will not take no for an answer and she will curse you if you continue in your op- obstinance. And uh, we're going to talk about that today. We're going to go into some detail about it. But before we do, as always, let's pray. Father God, we just praise and thank you for your truths that come forth. We thank you for showing us the signs and giving us discernment of the red flags that operate in a Jezebel narcissist. And I just give you the praise and glory for delivering many people from the grips of people that have to always have their way, that have to always manipulate and control every situation, and that can't can't take no for an answer. And I praise you and thank you for revealing to us that these are definite signs of a Jezebel narcissist. And Father, while we know today we're going to talk about the female Jezebel, we know that there are men as well that have a narcissistic spirit that are equally as self-important, as equally as abusive, and uh, it goes both ways. But Father, we praise you and thank you for revealing the female Jezebel today so that we can uh, get deliverance from her and uh, deliverance from her demons and also participate in uh, practicing spiritual warfare against this demon. It works Often in the church, it works hand in hand with a religious spirit. And Father, I thank you for revealing that to us today and helping us to battle against this demon. And in the mighty name of Jesus, we bind up every Jezebel spirit that's attacking anybody that's uh, watching right now or that's attacking this ministry or me or even my dog, Samson. We come against all Jezebel spirits, all demonic spirits of any kind, especially religious spirits that are attacking any of us and the use of false prophecy that's done by uh, the religious Jezebel because she does call herself a prophetess and she does believe that she hears from God. And we reject and renounce any false prophecies, word curses, spells, witchcraft, false prophecies of all kinds that come forth from these wicked, evil, uh, Jezebel-spirited women. We reject and renounce these over all of us, everybody watching, and uh, especially over this ministry in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. So I wanted to talk to you about this subject, about how she won't take no for an answer. And once you cross her in this way and you say no, especially to ha- having a relationship with the Jezebel, if you say no, all hell's going to break loose. You know, they had the expression, the hell hath no fury, like a woman scorned and You can be as nice as you want to be, but if they feel rejected, they're going to come back at you. And sometimes they're going to do that in the name of the Lord because you interfered with their will and the execution of their will. And because you did that, you must be um, against God because God agrees with them always. And we're going to talk about this in great detail. I wrote a blog today you can find on withoutspotorblemish.blogspot.com about this. So I'm just going to read uh, directly from it. Again, the title is a Jezebel narcissist female will not take no for an answer and she will curse you if you continue in your abstinence. So if a truly demonized Jezebel wants something, she will not take no for an answer and she will continuously try to manipulate and control you to get her way. She does not care if you're uncomfortable or unwilling to go along with her plan. It's her way or the highway. If mom ain't happy, no one will be happy. And for men that are walking with God in a right way with God, that are humble, that have repented, that are seeking God for truth, she will consistently try to cross up what you, uh, to try to get you to do things that you don't feel peace about or to get you to stop doing things that you feel peace about. She will interfere with your communication with God by the Holy Spirit and the, and the, fruit of the spirit, which is love, joy, and peace. Whatever you feel love, joy, or peace about, she's going to try to stay in the way of that. If you uh, don't feel peace about something, she's going to try to get you to do that. This is how Jezebel works. Up up is down, black is white. And um, she's going to try to get you to go against you aligning your will with God's will. Like uh, Jesus said to the Father, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. And as you're trying to do the will of the Father as a spiritual man, as a servant of God, remember Jezebel attacks the servants of God according to Revelation um, 2.20, which I'll put up on the screen. 
her her job is to seduce them to fornication and to eat things sacrificed to idols and she does so in her own mind as a prophetess that she believes she has a direct link to God and she must be in control of anyone in any kind of ministerial leadership she must drive that person she believes that she's so much closer to God that there's no way any man any male minister could be walking with God and 100% in the spirit without her help without her guidance without her direction and she has to manipulate and control or she feels off kilter she literally this these demons in her make her feel off kilter if she's not in control they make her feel miserable under it um, just completely out of sorts when she's not in total control so going on and she doesn't care if you are uncomfortable or unwilling to go along with her plan again it's her way or the highway for her this simply means that you need to acquiesce bend to her will and and in her view do right like you're not doing right unless you do her will because you must be out of the will of God if it's not in her will your unwillingness to acquiesce to her for her simply means you are wrong and you need to be corrected so she needs to correct you and God's going to use her to correct you does again once again it doesn't matter how humble you are how right you are with God she's going to have a demon leading her to do the opposite of what God really wants you to do as a man of God and of course this is not godly behavior on her part at least God doesn't even override our wills and you can tell that by the prodigal son story he wants our love for and obedience to him to be freely given by choice he doesn't force himself and you can see this from the parable of the prodigal son the father in no way chased his son or tried to override his son's will even though the son was making some horrible decisions you know he was throwing his life away took half he took his inheritance and threw it all away on um, lavish spending and, and debaucherous living and he ended up uh, you, we all know the story. He ends up in um, the pit with the, eating what the pigs eat. So it didn't go right. But the father let him go. And that's what true liter leadership is. It recognizes when someone under you is about to make horrible decisions and they know how you feel about it. The father, the father I'm sure, expressed his opinions. But he went, he let him go anyway. So that Why? So he could learn his, his own lessons. The father ultimately knew that in order for his son to be able to express real love for him as father, the son would need to see the consequences of his choices on his own so he could learn these lessons and self-correct. Of course, his father already knew his son was making terrible choices, but again, he did not force himself. And you know that when a woman is in control, she's going to become malevolent. She's going to become a dictator. She's going to become all these things because she's not equipped to be in the hierarchy in that position. That's why none of this feminist stuff's working. That's why people can't be married and in uh, lifelong uh, marriages anymore because the man has lost his place and he gave it away and the woman happily took it and all the structures of Satan's kingdom have created different uh, hierarchies that have move this along and helped it because what Satan wants to do is he wants to sacrifice men to the feminine. He wants to sacrifice us to Ishtar or to Ashtaroth. That's why Jesus, whether or not he was on a stake, Gastoros means stake, that's the Greek word used for cross, or, or he's just depicted on a cross now. Satan wants even Jesus to have been um, crucified on the female genitalia because that's what a cross represents I did a whole episode on that and it's all about the male um, archetype being sacrificed to the feminine and it's a, it's a huge obviously blasphemy against Jesus Christ and you know because he obviously died for everybody that was created but that's what Satan wants to do is the sacrifice to Ishtar to Ashtaroth to Semiramis to the feminine because he wants to always upturn God's order of things. Christ ahead of the man, man ahead of the woman. He wants to upturn that and to put everything out of sorts because um, he hates God. He hates God's ways. He hates God's order of things. He always wants to do the opposite. And that's what this is all about here. So uh, 
As far as a benevolent type of leadership, it recognizes the individual rights of people, especially those that make bad decisions that are in pride and recognizes their right, as with the prodigal son, that he can, he's going to go learn things the hard way. And it doesn't try to over control. Now, of course, if you're a father in a family and you've, you've got to lay down the law, but at the same time, you've got to give a modicum of freedom. There's got to be some sugar with the salt. You know, there's got to be, there's got to be love there in order to correct. You see what I mean? You can't just have a, a loveless home where it's always correction. There's got to be a little of both. And it's the same in a marriage. But what the Jezebel cannot do, as we said before, is be a benevolent influence on any situation. Her position is one of malevolence, control, manipulation, and ultimately the human sacrifice to the feminine control demon. This is why, as I said before, Jesus' report had been crucified on a cross, which is the expression of the female genitalia. He was sacrificed to a demon goddess, at least with the way it's reported now and how they put him up on a crucifix. That crucifix represents... Of the female genitalia look up the egyptian ankh and what it came from and how the cross was adopted from the ankh and you'll see what i mean this is the worst kind of blasphemy but the point is that satan is is in all his upside down nature wants to sacrifice god's patriarchal order to the feminine as well so he uses a jezebel spirited woman to try to destroy the servants of god the male servants of god Obviously, obviously, this is done through seduction, as Jesus said in Revelation chapter 2, that Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess, would seduce his servants to fornication, to the eating of things sacrificed to idols. When a Jezebel sets her eyes on a servant of God, and he recognizes what is happening, and denies her a place in his life, he, he has essentially laid down a challenge to the demon in that messed up Jezebel vessel to continue to try and snare and entrap him either through continued efforts of seduction or through a campaign to demoralize uh, the servant of God and to make that servant think that he's wrong because God through her says otherwise. So she's so forceful and so believing of the message that she believes she's gotten from God, that's really obviously from demons, that it can be very convincing if the man of God is not one to be in the word and to pray and to know God's voice for himself. You know, like Jesus said that his servants know his voice and another they will not follow. It has to, you have to literally be at that level to deny the Jezebel. The voices in her head, and there are indeed voices, say that you are the one that God has for her and that for you to protest or to not want the same thing means you are backslidden and unrepentant and are rebelling against God because you don't want her. She will be adamantly sure about this, and her frenzy, and in her frenzy of demonic prophetableness, she may even write you a prophecy saying, Thus saith the Lord, you are in a backslidden state, and now you will suffer unless you repent. Uh, and this has indeed happened to me before, and probably by the most evil person I've ever encountered, because I, I didn't see it coming, and they were good at hiding it. I, although I did see some red flags that when it did occur, it made a lot of sense. But I had spent many hours praying to God about the very relationship this person was trying to force. I knew it wasn't of him and was very kind to her and telling her so and saying that I knew that God had someone for her, but that it just wasn't me. Her response was to believe in her heart that I was going against God's will to write out a curse from the Lord over me, even saying, thus saith the Lord. Now, this particular person I had noticed gave more stock to prophecies than to the word of God, as she had another female... Uh, friend, which is important, who prophesied often, supposedly hearing from the Lord with great frequency. I never felt this friend was actually hearing from the Lord when I was told some of her prophecies. As after I was told what she said, it felt dead like Ichabod on the door. Ichabod is a name that means dead. And there was no confirmation in my spirit. But she, this, this woman, put great stock in her friend's words as if they were from the Lord himself. So that was, a, that was a red flag to me. Of course, I was reminded that Jezebel indeed fashions her, herself a prophetess. So it's no surprise that Jezebel, who would curse me because she didn't get her way, would listen to other Jezebels who prophesied. What becomes the question is, are there prophetesses of whom? Who do they think they're speaking the name of? Of course they think they speak on behalf of the Lord. But be entirely sure she instead 100% represents Satan. So how can you know she's false? 
You can know she is a false prophet when she prophesies in the Lord's name to humble a humble, repentant person always who always talks to the Lord about his weaknesses and tries to make things right to a servant of God by saying to him that God is going to crush him for not giving in to her will. She's not going to say it that way, though. She's going to say, you didn't do the will of God, and now you're going to be crushed. It's essentially what this woman prophesied over me. And... Um, but it really wasn't God's will. It was her will that God offended. And hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. As they say, well, a demonized Jezebel, this is the truth. God was going to, she, in, in her prophecy, God was going to make me pay for cutting off the relationship. Again, I did so after much prayer and seeking the Lord about it. So obviously none of it makes sense, but a Jezebel never will make sense. She'll never be um, em empathetic. Like, like, you would think if someone's like really sweet and says, look, I'm just not feeling it. This isn't going to work out. I don't, I, I, I don't want to proceed. And you would think that someone, an empathetic Christian would be like, okay, I understand. Uh, we, you know, this wasn't meant to be. If you're not feeling it, she wouldn't try to force it. But again, demonized Jezebels are roaming the church, seeking whom they may devour. So, Going on, she wants to tell the male servant of God what's, what God's will is because certainly the male servant is missing something. She wants to be over him to direct him to run things. As Jezebel ran Ahab, the Jezebel spirit wants to run the ministers of God. And there are many Jezebels with strong religious spirits roaming about the body of Christ seeking whom they may devour. But I'm telling you that many of them 100% think they represent God. They truly believe They've got a pipeline to God and that he speaks to them out loud and gives them, thus saith the Lord's, to give to other people. Now, we know that there are there are people who, prophetesses in the Bible, Anna the prophetess is uh, the one who announced Jesus' is coming in the temple when Jesus came, uh, when they brought him in as a baby. We know there was Huldah the prophetess and other prophetesses are mentioned. I'm not saying to try to throw the baby out with the bathwater that women can't prophesy. But I will say this, that a woman's prophecy, if from God, is going to have a confirmation in the heart of the man of God who is serving God humbly and who has repented of his sins. And he's going to have a confirmation from if there's a prophecy said by a woman in a corporate setting. And she's not meant to override the man, especially if the whole aim is to be married to him. It's not, it cannot start off with her telling him that she knows something that he doesn't. That's not God's hierarchy in a marriage. That, that will never be the case. Unless, you know, like the case with Abraham and, and, and Sarah, we're going to talk about that in a second, where she said to get rid of Hagar and Ishmael and God confirmed it. That's how that happened one time that she maybe didn't correct him, but gave him an idea that he didn't certainly didn't want to do. That was one time. And that is not a pattern of the way things are supposed to be in a marriage, uh, in a godly marriage. The woman is not going to get some word from God and override the hierarchy of God, the head of the Christ, head of the man, man, head of the woman. It's not going to happen. And it's not of God. And no relationship starts off like that where the woman knows something the man doesn't, where the woman knows that she's his husband, he's supposed to be her husband, and uh, he doesn't feel the same way, her will in the matter or her belief in the matter does not override the man's will. He decides for himself, just as a woman decides for her, herself. A man cannot override the woman's will. If he asks her to marry him, she can say no. And if he doesn't want to marry marry you or marry a person, uh, if a man doesn't want to marry any woman, he doesn't have to. And God's not going to override his will. It's that simple. He's not going to come in and say, you've got to marry this woman. He's not going to say that. Especially if you don't have peace about it. If you don't have the fruit of the Spirit about it. And you're praying about it. And you're, you're like, something's not right. I don't feel good about this. You are not to proceed. And there are just too many of us that have proceeded in these scenarios and things went crazy off the chain. Crazy off the chain because we proceeded when we didn't have 100% certainty. 
And you cannot let anybody manipulate or force you into a situation like that. God would never have a woman lead one of his male servants, ever. Ever. That's not Bible. And I know we live in a feminist world where we're all supposed to be equals and all that. It's not God's will. It's not God's will. Women do not overtake men and make decisions for them. And they certainly don't decide that they're supposed to be married uh, to a man when he doesn't have peace about it. And he, they can't override him. No matter how much the woman uh, ca calls out and says, in the name of the Lord, thus saith the Lord, you're backslidden because you won't do this thing. You won't marry me. A bunch of nonsense. And I, that person, you need to repent. Because I'm telling you, you are swimming with demons to try to force your will on somebody in the name of the Lord. And you are, you are a Jezebel. You are wicked. You are a wicked, wicked person. And it's going to come back and bite you in the butt because you curse somebody else in the name of the Lord. And you are going to, you are going to pay a heavy price if you don't repent. God can forgive you, but you better repent. And I'm not in any way trying to sound conceited here because I know all this stuff is hatched in the demonic realm. These women only want me because their demons are driving them to do so and punishing them for their perceived failure. I truly believe a Jezebel's demons turn the screws big time with either sinful titillation or maximum discomfort when they are not succeeding in the plan. It's not easy when you got demons and you run in your show. They're going to make you obsess. And that's what happens get obsessed you get delusional you think that something's real that's not I've had others who would not take no for an answer continuously come back trying to manipulate constantly trying to will their delusions into place as I've said before on another podcast I made the same mistake in my earlier walk I fell in love in my past with people who were either fakers or haters of God who are now long married to other people Sometimes you can't help who you love or are attracted to, but just because you experience that emotion does not by any means mean it's from God. Just because you experience some feelings doesn't mean that God gave you those feelings. We know in the world of narcissism that we often, children of narcissists, often love people like those who raised them. And many of us have been raised by terrible narcissistic people. And so we've been drawn to and attracted to the wrong people. And a lot of times, almost every time, we have to get delivered completely before we can truly love the right kind of person that God has for us. And that's been a big reason many of us have been single so long, too. Part of it for some of us. It's not all of us. I'm not trying to project on anybody. But some of it is that you're, God sees us continuously making the wrong choices because we're not delivered. We're not healed from our upbringing and we keep looking for the same to try to uh, rectify what happened to us as kids. We, we find, try to find the same person and, and make them right and, and resolve the problem through the person that we're in relationship with. And it never works out. You got to get healed so you can be a good spouse to, to another good spouse. If you want to be married to the right kind of person, you can't be bringing all this baggage. But again, this does not matter to the Jezebel. She must get her way. So instead of accepting the will of others as God even does, and to see that rejection could be protection or, hey, this is a clear sign the situation isn't what God wills, or this person doesn't feel the same for me, so I'll just move on, she instead battens down the hatches and tries through witchcraft, spell casting, false prophecies, although she's going to call it prayer. She's going to call this prayer. She's going to couch this in Christian prayer, but it's really witchcraft, spell casting, false prophecies, to try to turn the mind heart of her target. She's going to use what they call in the world the sweet mean cycle. She's going to say nice things and then she's going to get real mean to try to manipulate. Women, sticking on women, women in the church have the Jezebel spirit. They are doing this constantly. Constantly. This is a great evil and comes from Satan himself. There's one lady in Michigan who wrote me, the Holy Spirit has given me insight as to why you are my husband. I've been writing her back for months. Sometimes I just leave it alone and sometimes I write back. No, no, no. She sent me a care package. I returned it. Stop. 
she is obviously a stalker and she will not let it go and I don't want her you cannot override my will I don't want you and it's not God's will for her to be with me and she was doing that while she was married by the way she's not married anymore but she had already decided I was supposed to be her husband while she was still married she says he was cheating on her or whatever and uh, so that nullified in her mind her relationship I don't play those games and I don't want to have anything to do with this person and she will she will not stop but I mean I told her to stop again and maybe it's been I don't know a, a week now and hopefully it's over it needs to be over I don't want anything to do with this person you can't force yourself on me but she's still continuously saying God tell God has given her insight that I'm her husband and I have none of this insight and in fact I feel repulsed by it like disgusted like repulsed because of the way she's trying to force herself on me now she's obviously you guys are going to say she's obviously a delusional and crazy from the world's perspective or demonized obviously but it's this kind of nonsense it will not take no for an answer and again no means no and no is said because the other person has a will of their own that you cannot override if you as a Christian are trying to override somebody else's will you are acting as a satanic demonic minion that is not from God God does not force himself on people and he doesn't lead us to force ourselves on other people so you can say you're a Christian and a prophetess and all that all to the hilt but you are lying So I say, why, I ask in my own prayers, would God tell me otherwise about this Michigan lady? Why would God tell a woman who is supposed to be under the man as helpmate something he's not telling the man? Why would this delusional woman be right about something for which I am so positive she is wrong? It is against God's will and my will too. I don't want this lady, and yet she thinks she can correct me on this. That's the height of arrogancy, to think that you can override somebody's will and make somebody love you or make somebody be your husband that has no desire whatsoever and that knows God has another plan for his life. And again, I'm going to say, you cannot let other people superimpose their version of what God's saying on you. You have to have the Holy Spirit's leading by the fruit of the Spirit, peace, love, and joy, all that stuff. You have to be led of that. And if you don't have peace about something or joy about it, you are not to continue. You are not to, to move on in the situation. So I know many talking about this lady from Michigan, you're probably saying she's crazy. Forget about it. It's true. And you're right. But the point here is to show the pattern of how demons work in the demon eyes who are so deluded. And especially in those who have strong religious spirits that make them think they're hearing directly from God. Something that God didn't, God never told the other person. And in fact, in prayer after prayer, it said, don't stay away. How can two walk together unless they agree? There's got to be, there's got to be two spirits involved here. One spirit saying to another that I'm her husband and another spirit telling me, you stay as far away from this person as humanly possible. And those Jezebel spirited people who also have strong religious spirits, they make them, those spirits make them think they're hearing directly from God. And those spirits will chirp every day in the ears of the Jezebel victim. Because in that sense, they are a victim. Those demons are chirping every day. They, they hear the same voices. They are the, just like the people that you would say have schizophrenia. Schizophrenia is nothing but being demonized and hearing voices of, from the demonic realm. They're hearing into the spirit realm. And they're not hearing God's Holy Spirit. They're hearing from demons who chirp and chirp and they repeat the narrative so often and without proper spiritual warfare being conducted in these people, it, all that repetitiveness only serves to reinforce and buttress the delusion and to reinforce and buttress the delusion they're hearing from God because they just keep hearing it over and over again. They are hearing voices saying sentences. 
It's not just, you know, God speaks to us mostly by impressions through the giftings of the, of the Spirit, through the Holy Spirit, through the fruit of the Spirit. We know when we lose our peace about something not to proceed. And we know when we have peace about something that we can proceed. And that's mostly the way God speaks to us. I'm not saying he doesn't speak sometimes in an audible voice and give us very specific directions. And I do think that's going to happen more and more. But for the most part, many Christians who are hearing voices, they are not hearing the Holy Spirit. What's happened is they got born again. They might have received the Holy Spirit. And then their spiritual antenna, if you want to call it that, became it went from like a cruddy am transistor radio to like full hd fm like like full hd uncompressed uh digital recording and they're hearing into the spirit realm really loudly but they do not conduct spiritual warfare to bind up voices that are not from god and to command those demons to lead them and as they continue to walk through this life the ones that are of the of a pentecostal charismatic persuasion the ones that are operating in so-called prophetic gifts without doing spiritual warfare, they, they are, a lot of them have become so deluded that they wouldn't know the Holy Spirit if he spoke to them because they're so used to listening to demons they, because they refuse to cast the demons out by doing spiritual warfare. And I can assure you that's what's happened to each and every situation where women, these three women are, are saying that they're supposed to be my husband. I'm supposed to be their husband. There's three of them. I just, I'm not bragging about that, but I make the point that is, well, what is, does God, if God's really speaking through them, then I'm supposed to be in a polygynous relationship with three wives. What in the wide, wide world of sports is going on here? You got to listen to the Holy Spirit yourself. If you don't have peace about something, no matter what somebody says, no matter how they threaten you with prophecies, you cannot proceed. And you better darn well get away from that person. One, the Michigan one sent me a care package, which I returned. And inside there was a notebook with many pages of scribbled sigils, triangles and all kinds of, of, of sigils. I'm like, well, aren't you supposed to be a Christian? She also inserted lottery tickets. Like, is God a, a gambler now? Are you supposed to be buying lottery tickets? What in the wide world of sports? I mean, it's obvious who's driving her boat, but if I was a man who didn't seek God through his word for many years and learned to trust in his voice and his leadership through the fruit of the spirit, um, early on, if I didn't, uh, test the spirits, if I didn't, uh, you know, walk with him, if she came up and said, well, I'm, I'm supposed to be your wife, I might've just jumped in headlong and done her will. There's a chance she could have thrown me off kilter and I may have received her before I knew just how demonized she was and I may have been swayed by her certainty that I'm her husband without posting my own questions about what was happening. And most people watching this channel, including yours truly, have made huge mistakes in the past. I learned the hard way. I learned the hard way and I am not going to have to go uh, down that road again. But the certainty of the Jezebel, at least in the way she expresses her belief, perhaps she's not so confident when she's all alone, but the certainty is beyond the pale. Her belief that God has told her something that you need to receive, even though he never told you, is, is palpable. She could look you right in the eye and convince you of a lie, even though you are certain she's lying, if you allow her. This is why you cannot form a relationship with a truly demonized Jezebel narcissist, whether it's a woman with a man or a man with, with a woman. The gaslighting and the lying will never end unless they get deliverance. And they're not looking for deliverance because they think they've got everything just right. They've got spiritual pride, they've got religious spirits, and they've got a Jezebel spirit. And they believe God, they've got a straight, direct pipeline to God. And they, the voices in their head are from God. No matter how much evident sin is in their life, which they'll conveniently ignore most of the time. As for the female Jezebel as alluded to before, one of the biggest indicators of the false prophetess, prophetess relates to her attempt to put herself in control of and above the man. 
God is never going to give direction to the woman to give to the man when the man is God's servant and is serving him in spirit and in truth. He's never going to do that. It's not the hierarchy. Christ the head of the man, man head of the woman. It's not Christ the head of the woman who's going to tell the man what to do. Nope. It doesn't work that way. And if this offends you as a woman, just press stop because you're living a lie and you've bought into a feminist delusion and you might you have a Jezebel spirit probably. So to unsubscribe, I want to see my subscriber levels just drive down by anybody that's offended by this message. Just I'd lo- just get out, leave, unless you're going to repent and get in the proper order. And if you're watching me and you're married and you control your husband and manipulate him, hell's going to, you're going to bust hell wide open. The lake of fire is going to rise up to meet you unless you repent and, and take your proper orders to help me as the rib that came from the man that's supposed to be supporting the man and buttressing him and helping him, not denigrating him and take trying to take his position, which isn't yours. It's like a private trying to take over a captain. Can't you, you're not a, you're not a captain. Maybe not a private. You move up and become a sergeant or whatever, but you're still not an officer. The man's the officer. You're the enlisted one. You're supposed to be listening to, following after what your man is leading to do. As long as it's within the will of God. As long as it's not asking you to sin. If he asks you to go rob a bank, you don't obviously do that. But if he is especially if he's a servant of God and you're trying to control him and you're acting like you're the go-between and he needs to listen to and follow you, 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 you better repent. You better figure out a way to repent to your husband and to God because you are in big fat trouble. This is all coming to an end. I'm telling you, it's all coming to an end. We're, we're literally, we're, if we're, we're right at the door of the tribulation period. It's going to be three and a half years to get the word out and then we're going to be on the run for the other three and a half years. And then Jesus comes back and he's going to rule with a rod of iron, it says. He's not going to put up with this. So you better, we all, with whatever sin is in our lives, we all better repent and get right with God's uh, order of things and in, in obedience to his commandments and become that bride that's without spot or blemish and holy and ready to receive him when he returns because this is no joke. God's done. He's done. He's done with this church. He's done with this Jezebel spirit. He's done. He said he gave her space to repent and she would not. And now he's making going you know, to put her in a bed of languishing. You Jezebels aren't going to get away with this forever. You think you're riding high because the world supports you. Well, that's the world. And if you serve the world, you're going to get the, the same come up. It's the world's getting through the tribulation period. When all the vials and the seals are the seals are opened and the vials are poured out, the trumpets are blown. Y'all, it's, I mean, you think it's real now? It's going to get more real. God is never going to give direction to the woman to give to the man when the man is God's servant and is serving Him in spirit and in truth. The man will hear from and receive direction from the Holy Spirit directly. He will have the fruit of the Spirit to guide him. If he has peace about something, he knows he can proceed. If that peace is taken away, then the mature Christian male knows to stop any forward progress and seek God for why there is a lack of peace. It is the height of pride for a woman to think that she would be used of God to correct this type of man when she isn't even supposed to be leading an unbelieving man, much less one walking in the spirit. She isn't even supposed to be leading an unbelieving man, much less one walking in the spirit. Again, God would never give a woman a word that the man did not already receive or that God otherwise later confirms. If the woman says something that the man hadn't thought of and he's like, wow, let me go in prayer and God, God will confirm it. Just like he confirmed what uh, Sarah said to Abraham. We're going to talk about that more in a second. But there will be no question or doubt about how to proceed in the man's heart. If doubt exists, no matter how sure the woman is, the man is not to take the lead of the woman. You are not to put a woman in God's place.
Again, with regard to the believing man who's seeking God every day and searching himself to repent, God would never, and I mean never, use a woman to tell him something, especially with regard to a, to a relationship they, sh- they're, they either should or shouldn't be in, that God himself hasn't told the man. God would never upset the hierarchy like that. Yes, as I said before, God used the voice of Sarah one time to have Abraham send Hagar and Ishmael away, but always remember, it was Sarah's idea to hook Abraham up with Hagar and have a child by Hagar to begin with. That wasn't even in Abraham's heart. Sarah suggested it because she, that is Sarah, lacked faith that God would perform his promise through her as she was passing the age of the ability to have children, she was entering menopause. But they never would have been in that situation if she hadn't tried to hand him the proverbial apple for which he gave in and bit and by following her lead to begin with led to an untenable situation between Ishmael and Isaac and the descendants of Ishmael became the mortal enemies of the descendants of Isaac. Sarah's the one that, that led that to happen. Abraham didn't have any thought of that. But it's just like Adam and Eve in the garden. Eve partook of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, and then she handed it to Adam and he did it. And that's what's got to stop with us men. We cannot be led down the wrong paths by women when they have the wrong ideas that don't line up with God. And I'm sorry, women, if you feel like I'm piling on you, it just is what it is. It is what it is. We all have to follow after God, but you cannot override a man in in a marriage. You can't. It's not your place. Now, if you're afraid with amazement or you're being abused, get away. I'm not saying to sit there and and undergo physical harm or constant uh, berating or belittling, all that stuff. I'm not talking about that. But I am talking about you trying to control everything and direct what he does for work, direct what, uh, what, what he does when he's home, trying to give him honeydew lists all the time where he can't even think about God. He doesn't have any time left to think about God and being led of God. You've got him on a hamster wheel you better stop and step back and realize that you're the helpmate. The man is supposed to be able to stop and think about the direction of the family and what God's trying to do, especially now we're about to enter in the tribulation period. If you're in a marriage and you think you can be in control during the tribulation when we're on the run, you better think again. And you better thank God above that you have a husband to help help lead this. You better learn how to follow women. I'm telling you, now, women that are alone, God himself will, he's father to the fatherless and a husband to the widow. He will protect you and lead you. But I'm talking about in marriages, you women better take, you better learn to take a back seat. Especially to the husbands that are seeking God and serving him. Because, and they've got to get used to being a leader. Some of you have overtaken your spouses so much that they don't even know how to lead anymore. They just learned how to acquiesce and be Ahabs and do whatever your will is. If, if mom ain't happy, nobody's happy. So better do what she wants. Better stay on those honeydew lists or she's going to pout and hold sex back and just be a, a, a jerk. And the only way to make her pleased at all is to be her servant. If you have to have a, a male, a husband as your servant, then you're a Jezebel and you've made a eunuch of your husband. You're supposed to be asking him how to serve him and the family you're the helpmate he's not your helpmate you're his helpmate he's supposed to have the vision and men that are married and you don't know how to do this you don't know how to seek God for peace and to follow after because you've allowed yourself to be led of your woman you need to repent because you made your wife an idol and you need to reposition the order no matter how much it hurts. And you can't care if she wants to leave because she can't take it. If she has to leave because she's too full of pride to take a back seat, to take a demotion, then so be it. You can't care. Because that situation you're in, where if she's a true Jezebel and she's controlling the show, she's going to send you right to your death. Just like she did, uh, was it Naboth that owned the field that Ahab wanted? the vineyard and she had him killed and she killed all the prophets 
and she's going to keep trying to destroy you. She, if she can't humble herself and take her proper place, then let her go. That's all I have to say about that. Just let her go. Because she's not going to be like, especially you need to start practicing spiritual warfare against those demons in her. Now, ladies, I said from the onset, plenty of men with narcissistic demonic spirits and plenty of uh, servants of the Lord that are women that are, have gone through hell in a handbasket. But that's not what today's episode's about. Talk about both sides all the time. I'm talking about Jezebel women. Females with a Jezebel spirit who call themselves Christians and even believe the truth about the Sabbath or the false holidays. They don't celebrate Christmas and Easter and all that. They're few and far between though. And, and they believe much more truth. There, there are still manifold Jezebels among us that believe these truths. This is because they somehow have been convinced that God agrees with whatever their mind or will is about a matter. And they're hearing voices and they have not been delivered. And anyone who disagrees or rejects their will or their advances must also be against the will of God. This is a heady place to be full of pride and unwillingness to realize that they themselves are not gods or goddesses and that it is not their right to override the will of others. Especially a woman to override the will of a man. That's not God's order. God didn't create you to do that. I guess that's part of the curse that the woman would try to control the man. But you better get yourself, women that do that, you better get yourselves in order. I'm telling you, you better, you better figure out a way to take that back seat and to be a servant and have a servant's heart and reflect a servant's heart. And if the man is a real man of God, he's going to serve you right back. It's going to go both ways. It's going to be reciprocal. And the man's going to be up there. It's a real man of God. He's going to be benevolent in his leadership. Whereas if you are in control, females, if you are in control, you're going to be malevolent. You're not going to be able to stop yourself from being a jerk. Because you're not in the proper position. God did not ordain you to be in that position. But if you give the man the leadership, he's not going to, he, if he's really of God, he's not going to like micromanage you. You're going to be able to be a Proverbs 31 woman and have all, do all these industrious things. Proverbs 31 woman, did she had a vineyard and she was making clothes and selling clothes and doing all kinds of stuff. She had definite autonomy and strength, the Proverbs 31 woman. But she did not override her husband and she served him and the family. Proverbs 31 is a super high bar. But, but women today, you guys need to recognize you cannot be trying to override a man of God's will. If he's walking with God and, and operating in the fruit of the Spirit, if he doesn't have peace about something, you have no right to try to override it. That is not your place. And even if he's wrong, you need to uh, be uh, not wrong in a sinful way, but if he's still trying to figure something out and you, you may think you know the answer, it is not your job to pressure him and to make him try to do something he doesn't feel peace about. You got to learn how to follow. Good leaders know how to follow. If you can't follow the lead of your husband and you're a woman or a child, can't follow the lead of your, of your godly husband, that means you're not following after what God wants. You better get this right. It's sin. It's sin. It'll lead you to hell. It'll lead you to hell. As mentioned before, I think about that one girl in particular from over a decade ago that I thought God had assigned to me. I prayed and I felt the Spirit. This is the one. What an idiot I was. Because that wasn't God's Holy Spirit. That woman's married now and a professional yoga witchcraft practitioner. How on earth did God assign her to me knowing where she was going to go in her life? I mean, I guess I could have prayed and interceded for her and she went the wrong way anyway. And, but that wasn't God. That wasn't of God. But I didn't pester this person either. I just prayed for her from a, from a distance that she would repent and return. And, you know, maybe that wasn't a bad thing. But I didn't try to control her. I didn't try to like say, oh, God says, let's say the Lord, you're my wife. Even though I felt she was can't do that to people people have to make their own decisions just like the prodigal did to return to his father 
They have to make their own decisions. You can't force yourself on somebody. But a Jezebel narcissist will do it every time. I was dead wrong and certainly wasn't hearing from God. Just as these three ladies I've mentioned tonight are wrong and are not hearing from God. They are demonized. And the one who put the curse on me in the name of the Lord is a warning from him because I was supposedly backslidden because I, I, I wasn't doing God's will with regard to her. The level of spiritual arrogance she showed to write that as if from him because she didn't get her way is just outrageous. And to think God would talk to me like that when it, in fact it was time with him and repenting of other matters that I had searched out in my heart that led me to my conclusion. Why would he then call me backslidden? I was only backslidden from her will, not God's. And remembering that a bruised reed God will not break, why would he use such threats on, on a repentant person? He wouldn't, he would never do that. The threats are for the unrepentant. The threats are the, for the people that aren't following after his spirit and trying to obey him. He's not going to try to drop a hammer on anybody that's repented. A bruised reed he will not break. To the merciful, God shows himself merciful, but to the froward, he shows himself froward. The wages of sin is death. If we've got sin in our hearts and our minds, and we, re we can repent, of course, and there might still be some consequences, yes, but be there is absolutely no way on earth that God takes um, a situation where somebody wants to be your spouse and you don't want to be their spouse and decides he's going to like punish you for that. Especially when you spent time in prayer to him and you didn't have peace. Lord willing, I will never let any woman lead me against the leadership of the Holy Spirit who again uses the fruit of the Spirit to guide us. If it's the right thing, there will be love, joy, and peace, not constant worry, second guessing, or doubt. The blessing of God is without sorrow. If I ever marry, it will be in peace, love, and joy because God revealed it to both me and the woman who he reveals it to as well. We will both be sure and in agreement, and I will never have to override my own spiritual red flags or my own will in a matter to accept someone that I don't want, and especially if God isn't leading me to be with this person. No matter what they have received in their spirits from some other source, and no matter how sure they seem to be. So I say to all, don't let other people force you into situations that you are not spiritually sure of and for which you do not have peace. And pray everything through for yourself. If you are second guessing all the time and don't feel everything is copacetic, and especially if you lack peace, you must move on because what lies ahead if you stay the course, ignoring what, what you're experiencing spiritually, will be so much worse. <laughs> if that Jezebel narcissist gets you in his or her paws, the screws will be turned so tight that you will have to live in obedience to this monster or divorce. The outcome will be far worse the longer you allow the relationship to fester and grow as you lose yourself to the demons and the Jezebel who will attempt to take total control of you. And I especially say to men, God never intended for any woman to lead you in this way. She can have an influence, but to control and lead you is out of order. You are supposed to lead her. You are equipped to do so in a benevolent way. Any woman leading a man will lose her way and become cruel and malevolent, unable to remain kind because she is out of place and out of order. God did not equip women to lead men, and this is why this upturned Jezebel feminist way never works. When it does seem to work, only on a superficial level, this is because the man has become a total Ahab and acquiesced to her every whim. This is not a godly relationship and is completely satanic. God didn't ordain it to be that way. Men must not allow this or their lives will be destroyed. And women, if you want to be in a relationship with a real man of God, you better find your place as helpmate rather than trying to control and dominate. God is going to judge this kind of pride in women who allowed it to enter and cause them to try to overtake men. And it's not going to be fun. Repent of this if you find yourself behaving this way and seek God to get God to get yourself in proper order. You're playing with fire if you don't, and that fire will turn into a lake of fire from which you will never escape. You better repent now. And Ahab's will be down there too, swimming in the acquiescence to Eve's offer to sin and to follow after the feminine demonic deity. Because that's what you're doing. You're given into the feminine divine, which is Ashtaroth, Semiramis, by following after a woman's lead when that's not their place. 
You better repent. Ahab's better repent and Jezebel's better repent. It says in Revelation two, uh, chapter 2 that Jesus gave her space to repent and she would not. Anybody that can repent, I pray right now. I'm going to go ahead and finish in prayer. Father God, I'm asking you just to help anybody that needs to repent of pride or taking a position in uh, the, the hierarchy of the, of the marriage or the family that's out of order, whether it's the man or the woman, that they would make this right. And I just give you all the praise and glory for revealing to us how the Jezebel spirit really operates, that it will not take no for an answer, and it will try to superimpose its will on everybody and try to force everybody to um, comply with their will. And it's almost always, nearly 100% of the time, out of your will, Father. Help us to follow after your will. Not our will, but your will be done. And certainly not the Jezebel narcissistic spirits will be done in our lives, but your will be done. And I'm asking you to help everybody that's watching to repent of their part in this and to make uh, their lives right as far as uh, the order of things goes. I praise you and thank you for this, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. And I just bind up any demonic influence on anybody watching to put them in a place where they're out of order. And I, I loose an unquenchable hunger and thirst in each and every person to get right with God first and foremost and then get right with each other. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen, amen, amen. Samson's here making a little cameo. Let me get his head up. There he is. Good old boy. Glad you guys are here. If you like the new song that you're hearing right now, it's an instrumental. It's called Trust the Lord. And if you like that, that's a free download at the Reverb Nation link below. If you like um, the today's blog, you go to see that at withoutspotorblemish.blogspot.com. That was the basis of all the talk we just had. I was reading from it directly, but if you want to go read it for yourself, check that out there. If um, you'd like to donate, you can do so at the PayPal link below, and we appreciate all those who do so. And we'll see you next time on the podcast or Without Spot or Blemish Ministry. Thanks for joining us.